everybody? We are at 704 Games in Orlando. Uh, I came down here today to check out the new NASCAR Heat 4 game. We're going to go upstairs. We're going to play some of it. I'm going to record some for my YouTube channel, and uh, we're going to see what 704 has got in store for us this year. What's new in NASCAR Heat 4 this year? Um, well, let's start with the two most obvious things. The first thing is the graphics. We've got, I believe, 38 tracks. 37, count the roll twice, um, because it's Charlotte. We completely redid every single one of those tracks this year. So from the lighting, um, to the color palette, to the saturation levels, to the road surface, to the day and night environments, everything was redone. So it's got a lot more of a realistic feel to it this year. As a matter of fact, we added a bumper cam too to help increase the, the sense of speed. That's a different story. Um, but I think the first thing you're going to notice when you drop into one of these tracks is just how different it looks and, and how much better it looks than NASCAR Heat 3. Um, so that's, that's a great start for us. We've been wanting to do that for years. The second most obvious thing is we redid the audio. Um, yeah, from the engine high. audio to the UI sound effects to anything that makes a sound in this game. I don't think there's been one sound file that we didn't touch in NASCAR Heat 4. And uh, the engine is going to be the thing that everybody's going to notice and, and I think everybody's going to love. I know that I can just drive in circles all day without really being competitive just because I like to hear the engine sounds. I go to a lot of real-time races and, and it sounds just like you're at the track. Um, we have different audio per series, um, all of it updated. We have different audio based on the camera you're using. The cockpit is phenomenal this year. It's not only got the authentic engine sounds in it, but it also has all the creaks and, and little noises you hear as, as you hit bumps going around the track. White flag, take your time back. Um, a lot of work went into getting that to work the way it does this year. We actually went out to Auto Club and recorded with Roush Fenway. Thank you, Roush Fenway. Um, you guys were fantastic. We wouldn't have been able to do this without you. The third, I guess, pillar of what we've improved this year are the physics. We have completely revamped the physics. Um, Obviously, we wanted to go with the 2019 Aero package. We have to do that. We're a NASCAR licensee, and they want us to include their Aero package, so we did. But just overall, the handling has been improved. And on top of all that, we've added settings and options just to let you play the game the way you want to play it. Um, we're not experts on, on you specifically, Jeff, or anybody else who plays the game. So what we wanted to do is kind of open everything up and give players the opportunity to tweak it and tune it the way they feel they want to play the game. So. The handling is just different and more improved across the board, but the way the AI reacts with you, um, the number of assists that you need or don't need, all of that is tunable by the player. Tire wear. Um, we have completely revamped tire wear. You're going to feel tire wear much more quickly um, than you would in the past. So I think one of the problems we've had with the game, and, and people have called it out, and, and rightfully so, is that you know your lap times didn't necessarily degrade as much as they should as you as you went around the track. So. They do this year, trust me, they do. You're gonna get out there and you're gonna feel your tires go and you might find yourself getting a lot more loose uh, more, quickly than, more quickly than you have in years past. But that's also a tunable option. You can set that for normal, you can, you can set it so that the AI um, loses grip more quickly or less quickly, and you can set that as per usual to your own car as well. That's still in there, you can do four times wear or three times wear or whatever. Um, we've also taken care to make sure that pitting has been tuned, um, so, in the past, you might see some instances where you'd pit and you know how many tires or what you should be doing on pit road. And yet when you do that, you come out and you've lost like 20, 30 spots. So you won't see much of that happening anymore this year. That has been tuned. Another big change that we've done is we've in introduced multiple racing groups. So the AI, the AI is not gonna run around in a single file um, pattern around the track. They're gonna, they're gonna branch out and spread out. And again, that's tunable as well. You can set the AI to start um, in a compressed state so everybody's like really close together when you launch the race or you can have them spread out a little bit more just in case you might need that extra space depending on your skill level. That also applies to the race itself. You can have the uh, AI spread out more when you're racing or less. Another big thing that we tweaked is, is the ping pong effect, the quote unquote ping pong effect. Um, it's been eliminated in multiple ways. When, when you bounce off, a, you're not going to bounce off a car anymore. Um, and there is a tunable slider in there that allows you to tune how much you interact with a car when you hit it. So, in general, it's been tuned 
to be better anyway, but on top of that, you have the option to move the slider and interact with the cards the way you want to. So in, in some situations, you know, you, you may say, well, in last year's game, I would have bounced off that car. Well, this year, you might not even touch that car because the AI just does a better job of saying, oh, he's right there, or he's like having problems, or he just bounced off the wall and they get, get the hell away from him. Um, so you find yourself not really, really having that problem anymore. So yes, when you do hit another car, you're gonna notice that the ping pong effect has been eliminated. But you may not hit as many cars as you did in the past just because they're so much better at avoiding you. Uh, you know, another thing too is you're, you're far less likely to, to wipe out when you touch the apron. That has been changed completely. Um, so it's still possible. It's not as easy to drive down there as it is to drive on the surface. But you'll notice more or less that you're just not going to touch a wheel on the, on the apron and just go slide. And that's just not really what we wanted anymore. And we got rid of that as well. So when we first started working on NASCAR 4, we, we knew that there were things we wanted to address. We knew we wanted to address the graphics. We knew we wanted to address the physics. But we knew to do those things, we might have to sacrifice the kind of the back of the box bullet feature. You know, we have ideas. There's, there's probably a million ideas of things that we could do. Adding another series comes to mind or some sort of online connected career mode. And that's a bit scary because it sounds like you've done nothing if you don't have a feature like that. It's so easy on the back of the box to put a picture of a dirt car and say we've added dirt. It was so easy to say we did split screen because it's just one image on the back of a box you know, that shows two cars playing at the same time. But we knew we had to get to these things. We kind of had a plan, you know. I don't even want to say kind of, we did have a plan. I mean, when we first started, it was kind of a fly by the seat of your pants. I've been proud of every version that we put out, but you know, we, we, we have a small team. We had limited time. Uh, the developer, Monster Games up in Minnesota, great developer, great guys. Really know their NASCAR stuff. But as we started working through these games, we knew the first year we were kind of content light. So we had to get more series in the second year. You know, so you, you have to pick what you want to do. The third year, it's like we wanted variety. Uh, NASCAR is fantastic. We all love NASCAR but there's a lot of ovals in it. So we thought, let's try something a little different. Let's give some people more variety. We put in Dirt. Dirt proved to be the second most popular series in our game last year, right after Cup. So we were happy that that was in, and we were happy that people were able to enjoy it. Well, a lot of the polish that we put in were requests from the community. And um, from day one, I think we've, I've been at several game companies, and I think we've done as good a job as anybody at following our community boards, Twitter, social media, our YouTube comments, whatever, and in-game data based on you know what we're actually getting from people like what are they playing what are they enjoying the most but we do listen and a lot of what we did this year was because we were listening um are we gonna get to everything it's impossible to get to everything but we try we really do try and going forward we're, we're listening and yeah you say the paint booth we know about the paint booth um the paint booth has some complexities to it that would have eaten up a lot of time and maybe kept us from getting the physics to where we wanted or the audio and when everybody hears the audio, when they race with this audio, they're going to just love it. You know, the, the visuals finally got them to where they should be. You know, there's room for improvement, of course. You know, we wouldn't keep doing this. There wouldn't be 30 versions of Madden if there wasn't room for improvement. But, um, but we feel that we were able to knock off a bunch of what we saw from our fans on our various social media channels. It's funny, in, in sports games, I've been doing these for like 20 years or something like that. I've lost track. And there's always a challenge when it comes to yearly development because you really don't have a year. You've got about nine months to get everything going because when the game finishes, usually people are pretty fried and a couple people take a few weeks off. We all do, or not a few weeks off, but we take some time off just to kind of recuperate and recharge the batteries. Then you got to get going on DLC for the last product you release, but at the same time, um, you want to get going on the next version. So you have to spend three months or so in prototype and pre-production, which is to design the features that you want, make sure they work, make sure that the game can actually do that. We get to that point right around January where we start full development. We've really only got about six months left before we've got to start fixing bugs and getting the game polished up. So it's always a rush. And with NASCAR, it's, it's even more challenging in some ways because of the licensing involved. Um, for example, in the NFL, there's a players union. They kind of cover everything that has to do with the players. And then there's the NFL and they cover everything that has to do with the NFL. In NASCAR, there's teams. Um, there is the NTP, which many teams belong to now. Um, but then you got truck drivers, they're all independent. You've got Xfinity, Xfinity drivers, most of them are independent. Um, and all their schemes and sponsors, and it just becomes a tangled web of, of, of madness. And a lot of that content isn't even finalized until February when Daytona starts up. And so you're scrambling to get all the right event logos and team sponsors in the game as well. Um, on top of that, if you, if you somehow didn't pre-pro correctly and didn't plan out what you wanted to do and you don't have enough time, well, you don't have a lot of time to go back and change something. You know, you've kind of gone down a path. So it gets pretty hectic and, and 
we, we try really hard, we work really hard, no matter what we do, we always seem to be working a lot of hours when it comes to the end, but um, it's, it's always worth it um, to see the people's faces, the players who get a chance to play this game and enjoy it. I mean, just love seeing that. And I'd, I'd much rather spend some extra time to make sure something gets done right um, than to not, and then see somebody complain about something I could have fixed if I spent an extra hour or two. So it's always worth it. Uh, we have a thick skin because we get a lot of this is crap or why'd they do this or, or lazy is my favorite word. There's nobody who does this for a living who's lazy. What we have to do is have the game into first party, Microsoft, Sony, um, roughly six weeks before it ever sees the store shelves or, or you can download it digitally. Um, and it has to get approved. So when we submit these games, it's typically five days um, and then they can reject it and it's another five days and they can reject it again and it's another five days. Um, I think it's pretty standard that you go into a first party submission twice. So you're looking at 10 to 14 days, 10 working days. Um, so what we do is you try to tighten it up so that the game is solid, but you can't really risk putting anything in too late before you submit because you have to test something thoroughly and anything you change can break anything else in the game. So we tend to have like various code branches all over the place um, with things that we won't check into the main code base when we get close to first submission. Um, but we'll test them and we'll keep an eye on them. And then when the game gets approved, then everybody moves on to the patch and the patch doesn't require as much time because the first submission has to go in with enough time to get all the boxes made, the discs printed and everything manufactured and sent to the store shelves. The patch is digital, so you got a little more time. You don't have to get anything to any store shelf. Nothing has to go to Walmart or whatever. Um, so you have a little bit more time and we just wrapped up our patch like a couple days ago, so, uh, and it's still not approved, so we have to go through that process. And it always gets scary because you're getting close to your deadlines and. Your, your marketing materials already say the date you're coming out and everything, so something happens. And this isn't unusual to us, this is the same with every company that I've ever been with. We don't want to ever get so close to something or, or so vain that like we're the only ones who could have a good idea for the game. Um, and we want to give people what they, what they want or what they need in a NASCAR game as best we can. I could even challenge that the esports thing is something that we're growing, but I wouldn't say that they're getting the lion's share of the attention. I would say the exact opposite. The game, the core game still gets the lion's share of our attention. Um, we're almost primarily focused on the game itself. And if, if the game doesn't do well, there is no esports. So we have to make sure the game is, is good and is improving and people see the direction that we're taking it and they're happy with that direction and, and, and they want to get on this, this ride with us to the future. We, we haven't forgotten about the single player experience. I personally like playing single player more than I like playing multiplayer. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't, we don't you know, make multiplayer as, as good as we can, but sometimes when you're not interested in being yelled at for, for <laughs> how you're driving or, or either how good or how bad you are, it's nice to kind of just sit down and play career mode and, 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 and relax and enjoy yourself. The day to night transitions thing is funny because um, when I worked at EA, uh, use as much of this story or as little of it as you want, Jeff, but when I was at EA, one of the coolest things that we did was do day to night transitions, and it was one of the things I was pushing for, and I just always thought it was so cool. So many races started, you know, before the sun went down, and then the, the sun just, you know, there are always issues with that too, because if you did it real time, well, and you're running a 10 lap race, was the sun just going, you know, across the sky? And it came out and it, social media wasn't as big back then, but it didn't seem to like, you know, land or stick as, as much as I thought it would. So I was kind of bummed. And that, maybe that affected my decision making as far as how much I wanted to push for it in, in, in the future. Um, we always had bigger things, bigger fish to fry the last three games, but I've always wanted it. And we got it in this year. And I think the way we did it is better even than the way I um, had done it back in the Thunder days at EA. Um, so now if you race stages, you'll see the transition between stages. So let's say you're racing Homestead. Um, Homestead, for example, we always had as kind of a, a pseudo night track. It was kind of a sunset or a day track the last couple of years. Well, it's night now completely if you want it. If you race a single stage, it's night. If you race stages, it starts out with a sun up. And when the stage, the first stage ends, when you start the second stage, you'll see a gradual transition to darkness, um, but not complete. It'll start that direction. And then after the second stage, um, it'll get even darker, it'll be pitch black. So when you're on stage three, it'll be pitch black. So I was just playing this yesterday and that came in, like you said, at the very last second. Um, it's always risky and I was so happy to see it make it in. I was racing Vegas, um, the second Vegas race, which is a night race this year. I was racing Homestead, I did Darlington, um, just to see those things go from day to night. Um, and I'm really happy the way they, they pulled it off at Monster because I, I do like 
you know, it, it still solves the problem without having to worry about the sun flying through the sky at like rapid speed. Um, there are other ways to do it, but this way is very effective. So that was one of my favorite features that made it. I mean, that one and, um, and being able to race the top three series at any track in the top three series, except for Eldora. Um, and I've already read some comments about, well, why not Eldora? Well, just the way our game is built, we couldn't put cup on Eldora because there's 40 cars and we can barely fit the cars that are out there. Um, you'll see when you practice at Eldora, you'll see all the cars around the rim because the way our game is built, these cars have to have a home on the track. We can't stick them off in the universe somewhere. And so we wouldn't be able to fit them. Plus just getting dirt physics on a cup car was way more complex. Doesn't mean we won't do it in the future. But racing cup at Mid-Ohio or, or racing trucks at Watkins, um, you know, Iowa, so many combinations. And not only did we support this offline, but you can play these online as well. Um, and we've created a ton, um, by we I mean the guys at Monster Games I should say, but we've created a ton of fantasy seasons in championship mode that include, some include these, these fantasy tracks, I don't say fantasy tracks, but these other tracks that typically you weren't able to race. So you've got almost 38 tracks now uh, that you can race in every series. And there aren't a lot of games that give you that much variety. Um, and then on top of that, you've got dirt, which we spend a lot of time improving. Um, I think right out of the gate, people will notice the particles. You know, it didn't just get applied to the tracks, the graphics, and the graphical improvements. It was to the particles and dirt. You'll see a lot of dust kick up a lot more than you did last year. But the physics also changed in dirt. All right, guys, this is my second day actually right now uh, because the first day I've been here, uh, the physics were so different from the last heat game. I was absolutely terrible at it. I had to get used to, you know, tire fall off. I had to get used to the way uh, that you race the AI. Um, and I'm glad I did take the time because today I've been recording uh, for YouTube and uh, I'll be much better at it, especially with dirt racing and things like that. So my first impressions of this game are, um, it's different. It is different than Heat 3. It's way more polished. Uh, the cars feel like they have weight to them. Uh, and now I understand what Zane was telling me in that uh, Q&A session I did with him. Wow, what a difference that does actually make, um, having the physics drive off the right rear of the car. Um, and you, you know that it is because when you're looking at um, your, your, uh, you know, the breakdown of what the tire percentage is and temps, that right rear gets eaten up the fastest. So depending on where you go, of course. However, uh, there's some heatisms in there, I call them. Uh, and that's basically like, you know, the replay system, the, the, the TV camera is the same. There's some new cameras added to the replay system that makes it more polished. Uh, there's a lot more options. We don't have those, you know, those uh, names over the top of the cars and things like that. Uh, so there's a lot of new stuff. The biggest thing is, is just the change in um, options. There's way more preferences. You can really tailor this game to how you want to race. Uh, and I love the fact that I can turn off, you know, everything that uh, pops up on the screen uh, in front of me, like, you know, the little name tag over their car and stuff uh, to give you that, you know, just that much more immersion. Another thing that's really, really cool is that the, um, the sound, when you get up next to that wall, the sound wall reverb sound, it's so good. It sounds like what you would hear on a, uh, on a roof cam uh, if you watched a video of that or if you've seen it on TV. Uh, another thing is that um, just the overall polish and look of the game. Uh, it's the shaders, the night. Um, this is patch day one. Big thanks to 704 Games for having me out once again. Um, I have uh, some experience in iRacing and in, in sim racing. I've done, I, I, I do a lot of sim related driving games. Um, and I've been playing NASCAR games my entire life, like from back in the days of, from Papyrus, this is NASCAR racing. Used to do um, all sorts of those kind of games. So I understand um, why the, uh, why some people may think that, hey, why are you getting the opportunity to, uh, to go do this? Uh, it's because I, I think that uh, I, I'm pretty well versed in NASCAR games and uh, sim racing in general. So. To me, there's some uh, some hiccups of uh, of, of the, the the change. Um, basically, in the old Heat game, uh, in Heat Three, uh, when I'm on the wheel, I would have that swimming back and forth and going down the straightaway. There's so many more options to what you can do to your wheel now. 
that's all gone. There's way more driving aids to, to eliminate um, oversteer off the throttle, uh, oversteer on braking, things like that to really aid uh, your wheel and your setup and how you drive, which I really, really, really like. So there's um, a lot of things there that are gonna keep NASCAR Heat 4 will be on my channel uh, this year because it is a polished and good looking uh, and, and a very believable experience of racing. So looking forward to it. I've been having a blast here so far. Um, I have seen the console version. The console version is very pretty. It, uh, it doesn't seem like it's so watered down. Um, the frame rate is at 30 right now, um, but uh, the, the motion blur that's there, you still get the sense of speed. Uh, and I played a lot of 30 frames per second games uh, on console and when you don't have any motion blur happening, it seems very, uh, very rigid for sure. So enjoying it so far and uh, I'll let you know my thoughts uh, later on.